きすいのはほはい。I'm excited that you're excited because, like, I'm definitely pretty sure my hype levels for this manga are nowhere near as high as yours. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anyone's as hyped as I am for this series. Well,、um, then it's perfect. I'm really excited.、Uh, so, a little street cred, my favorite, of course, Fruits Basket. Big, big fan. It was actually one of the first series I picked up. So, it was great. Wandering this random small little book. Sh- Store in Boulder, Colorado for a summer program. And I saw Yuki and I'm like, oh my God, I'm interested. I'm interested. <laughs> that started me down this long journey, which I've enjoyed. Also, a big fan of Skip Beat. That is one of my top faves, still going.、Yeah. And Lovecom, definitely a big fan of that. I cried so hard, still continue to cry at the anime. so Yeah. Also, generally, like, who are you, Loyola? What do you do? Oh, right, of、like、course.、Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that intimate aspect. Oh, no, I'm kidding. So, I currently reside in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and I use words like reside on a podcast. I am serving as a college and career pathways associate through the NACA Inspired Schools Network.、Uh, NACA is the Native American Acute Community Academy. Uh, here in Albuquerque. So I'm assisting with Native inspired schools to get their students to college and to career pathways. Yay! That's、really <laughs> what I do. That's what you do.、Uh, yeah, Loyola and I met at college through the Native Americans group. So that was fun. Yay, <laughs> now! Yay, now! Woo! All right. So, like, let's talk about this Meru Puri thing. You know, it took me. Honestly, I'm glad that there was an explanation of where this, like, that it's just a mashup of m e r c h a n Prince, but in Japanese, I was like, oh, that makes so much more sense. Now I understand how to pronounce it. Because <laughs>、um, apparently it's just m e r u h i n Prinsu. I'm like, oh, I get it now. Okay, that's definitely not the way I was pronouncing it. I'm pretty that sure、one. that's how like, it's supposed to be Meru Puri. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're going to have a lot of fun with pronunciation on this podcast because we don't know how anything is pronounced. It's just going to be like, whatever. So if you get super annoyed, write in, you know. Yeah, tell us, tell us how everything is properly pronounced and.、Uh... I will not read it. <laughs> <laughs> also. Jeff is、uh, in the other room and he literally just texted me. Explain that you're saying a German word that is m e r c h a n and means fairy tale and not just saying the English word merchant because that is the mistake that he made last night. <laughs> the. I didn't even realize it was a German word. I should have, but. It has an umlaut over the A. <laughs> I just thought it Dead was a giveaway. Dead giveaway. Dead giveaway. <laughs> Anyway, so yeah, that's a little fun. Now we know how to pronounce that one thing. Everything else, not so much. And it never comes up again, so that's good. <laughs> yeah. So this is by Matsuru Hino, who wrote Vampire Night. And、uh, so I, I actually thought since the series was so old that it might be out of print, but that is not true. You can still buy it digitally and physically from Viz. And I think that her works are perhaps getting a little more love because there is actually a new Vampire Night series called, like, What? Yeah, called Vampire Night Memories. And I actually、oh, couldn't really,、yeah. it might just be like a compilation of stories because it kind of seems like she didn't let Vampire Night go after its run. Like, she wrote a bunch of stories still for it. She s h o u l d Not bad. <laughs> <She> not bad. <laughs> I,、uh, I would agree. <laughs> Generally, <laughs> not my. Favorite series. But yeah, so like they're really heavily promoting Vampire Night memories. So, you know, you can read all the all the Hino things from the Viz. And、uh, my usual warning that、uh, the aforementioned Jeff works at Viz. What? Oh, yeah, Loyola, Jeff works at Viz. He makes their apps. <laughs> 
What a what? loser. <laughs> Loser. He's living the dream. What are you talking about? No, I know. Dude. Shut up. He is... <laughs> He's living my dream. So rude. Anyway. Every fangirl's dream. Like, let's just up and move to California, you know, and work for Disney <laughs> yeah. Media. Yeah. Jeff, living the fangirl dream. All right. So what is this weird little short manga about, oil? <laughs> oh, goodness. All right. So we have Ari, uh, Ari Hoshina, um, typical, you know, high school girl in Japan walking to school. And uh, she's carrying with her her great, 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 however many greats, grandmother's mirror. And all of a sudden, a little boy pops out. Woo! Duh, that's how mirrors work. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if that hasn't happened to you, check your mirror, um, return it to the store, let them know it's defective. And chaos ensues after that. Uh, so Ari and Aram are uh, two people who weren't meant to meet, but they do. Aram's older brother, Geely, uh, actually casts a spell on Aram. Basically, any time that he is in the dark, he grows older. Uh, but there's a mix-up with the spell, and he only ages to about 17, so teenager-ish. Really, he was supposed to be an old man. <laughs> And so I guess he, said he turned into a hot teenager. A uh, mm. hot teenager, but we'll let you decide that once you read the story. And so it's basically Ari and Aram working together, much to Ari's dismay, to get him back home. And um, Aram chooses Ari as his favorite lady. Favorite and so lady. he blesses her with the maiden's kiss by choosing her. And so for him to revert back to his younger self, again, he looks like a little child. He looks like eight, but doing a little math, he's probably about 12. I mean, boys, like, hit their growth spurt later. Maybe he's 12. I don't know. I don't <laughs> know. Making excuses. We tried to do the math. It was a little hard. But yeah, decide for yourselves. Make the story interesting. <laughs> um, and so Ari kisses him, and he reverts back to his normal self. And um, chaos ensues when... Aram decides that he loves Ari and they should be together. Woo. <laughs> Magical boys. Don't you love them? They're the best. We all do, right? Peoples out there in podcast land. Yeah. All right. So I wanted to give people a baseline for like what our familiarity with the series is. You are much more familiar with it than me is what I've gathered. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Actually picked it up back in high school in 2005. Yeah, Walden Books. You guys remember that? Oh, those were the That's days when bookstores existed. Yeah. That's cute. So yeah, I was definitely really interested in the series. Um, bought all four books or volumes immediately. And, you know, I've reread wow, this thing like faith. seven times. I did. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, as soon as I read like chapter two, and I'm like, "Yep, I'm gonna love this." Like, <laughs> you're like, "I'm sold." <laughs> sold. There's magic. There's 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 a lot going on. <laughs> there's there's a guy definitely a lot going something. on. Yeah, yeah, and I thought that the series would continue, but um, I guess it was just meant for a short run, which is good. You know, there's definitely a lot left to the imagination of like, where could this story have gone, and what could have happened. That's great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, go read it. That's end of podcast. End no, of kidding. podcast. We're done. No. <laughs> so my level of familiarity is that I had actually read Volume One also in high school. I guess around the same time because my my friend was buying it, but I don't think I read anything beyond Volume One. Just weren't into it, or what is your hate for magical boys, Ashley? No. I was just like. What is going on in this series? Like, it was too much <laughs> for me, I think. Yeah, I think it was a combination of, like, I wasn't super into it. I'm not sure that my friend ever completed it. Maybe she did. I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> it was, like, 12 years ago. What do I know? <laughs> I mean, it's not a fruits basket where it's, just, like, double-digit volume numbers. <laughs> it's, like, four. <laughs> Listen, we were all into our double-digit volume <laughs> series, though. Like, we were passing around, like, Bleach and fruit oh, basket. Oh my gosh. I'm like, no, something simple, you know, just something I can knock out in a day or two. So, Loyola, I know you love this series very, very much. It's near and dear to my heart. Yeah. But do you have like a favorite thing? 
Oh my goodness. Just one, or maybe two. Pick one, Loyola. I think the side characters are pretty fantastic. Like, there's a lot of depth there that I think you don't really get with side characters in manga. Particularly this type of manga where it's like, oh, that's my friend. We're best friends. All we know about her is that she likes tennis. Like, I don't, like, where, where is the depth in all that? that? <laughs> So I really like the side characters. They're pretty fantastic. There's not a lot of them, so that's pretty good. I mean, it's a short series. So there's a, also a great opportunity here to really expand and do some world building that I think is really interesting because Aram is actually from this kingdom called Estelle. Did we did we land on Estelle? <laughs> I don't know. I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say, uh, no, I think I, I landed on Aztail because that sounds like something Aztale. that would actually be said. <laughs> <laughs> like a fairy thing. All right, so um, we'll go with Aztel. So there's these characters from Estelle, As- Aztel. <laughs> We're not going to say it the same ever. Just, <laughs> just, just, just accept our fate. <laughs> Roll with it. Yeah, so they have this kingdom that Aaron comes from, and uh, he's second in line to be king. His brother Geely is first. And there's actually seven royal families. And Ari's and then it great becomes Game of Thrones, JK. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't think their wedding's in the same way, but okay. <laughs> so Aram comes from this world, and um, I guess you could say that uh, Ar- Ar- I'm getting Ari and Aram, like, I know, that it's very confusing that they have A names that are yeah. four letters. <laughs> Jerks. No, I'm kidding. Uh, so Aram comes from this world, and in kind of like a heritage way Ari does too because her great great whatever and they even say whatever um they don't even know how far back yeah they just put a question mark next yeah to each thing. <laughs> uh, her great great grandmother came from this world as well so it's pretty interesting that you know a princess from that line could just like up in peace you know into ours and i think there's a lot of really great world building that they could do so i guess those are two things i really like about it Notice I didn't really touch on the main romance. Yeah, <laughs> screw the like, main yeah. characters. <laughs> you guys are all right, I guess. Mm, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. Another two. Okay, so you go. What are Me, some favorite things? No, I would agree. I, I think that the side characters are generally the more intriguing part of this manga outside of the creepy main romance. <laughs> <laughs> Sidestep that, sidestep that. Sidestep that, that. yeah. I don't want to spoil too much, but there is a chapter at the very end that focuses on the side characters, and you're like, this is so much better than (laughs) the rest of this manga has been. At least for me. That's way better. That's how I felt. I also felt that as soon as I saw Roz, I was like, I'm gonna like you. Roz, you're cool. You're a cool dude. I never quite got a grip on what his deal was, but you know. I mean, he was just like doing what the queen told him to do, fine. And he he was supposed to, his, Ari's grandmother was supposed to have married his great, great, whatever. And then he, his family should have been on the throne, blah, blah, blah. So there's, you know, revenge, mad story there. And I was like, yeah, 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 Roz, you're cool, cool, cool. Yeah, I think he functions as the villain character more than Arm's brother does, Julie, who initially cast the spell. Um, so yeah, Raz, man, he's, he's pretty cool. I do enjoy how quickly the racist. plot of... Yeah, we could talk about the representation of, uh, you know, non blatantly non-Japanese character <laughs> in this fantasy world. Yeah, but I, I do enjoy how quickly the GL being evil line was dropped pretty hard. Pretty fast. Pretty fast. Pretty fast. <laughs> but to a point where I was like, wait, so like... Does he want to do something to Aram? Like, now they're just cool. He's like, oh, Aram found happiness with Irie, so whatever. Like, I don't know. <laughs> this manga confuses me. <laughs> drop that thread. He's just going to drop all the Whether threads. Whatever, is cool. Like, cool. I don't know. I mean, there was that one scene when we first meet Raz in our world where one of Ari's classmates touches his hair. And he goes and he just cuts it off. Yeah, <laughs> he's, he's like, like... He got dirty. I was like, whoa! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Damn! 
What is your problem? I think I liked him less with his shorter hair. I was like, oh, Roz, you shouldn't have done that. You were way cooler this way. Just wash it, man. You know, a little shampoo is totally fine. They don't have water in it. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all have soap. You have to. Magic soap. Hey, can't they just like conjure up magic to wash the hair? I don't know. The magic in this world not thoroughly explained either. <laughs> Oops, <Nope. so> well. <laughs> they can do some pretty intense things and then they can make lights flash. I'm like, where's the in between here? I love that she was just doing like a basic, like cute, like victory pose to make that light flash. Yes. Oh my gosh. It's very hard to take this manga seriously in any way because, like, it doesn't want you to. It really just doesn't want you it to. It doesn't. It really doesn't. And when she does that little pose, I just think of, like, Final Fantasy, you know, after the battle, you win. Yeah. <laughs> the soundtrack to her. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'd be like, that would be my pose in my victory song. Like, come on. <laughs> Amazing. All right, so, um... Spoiler territory. Yeah, this is a short series, but uh, we are definitely going to spoil everything from here on out. I mean, I feel like, is there anything to spoil? Like, you know, you just, it's shoujo manga. They're going to get together in the end. Like, <laughs> come on. Whoa, whoa. Whoa. Play spoilers first. No, whoa. <laughs> so, Guess what? There's an amusement park scene. There's an amusement That's park. Great. <laughs> Guess what? They go to the beach. There's a beach scene. <laughs> Guess what? Amnesia. <laughs> Although that's not as common, I don't think. Uh, it happens in enough series for me to be like, yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah. It's a common occurrence now. All right, but we will insert the real spoiler warning here. Like, if you have not read the series and like you are intrigued to read it, you should probably not listen to the rest of this until you read it. So, go. Unless you don't care about spoilers and you're just like, you know what? The journey is the same. If you have a map, is if you don't. You know, it's great. The journey, oh, man. It's all about snaps. the journey. You know what? I agree with that philosophy. That's my <laughs> philosophy on life. Because, again, this isn't the type of manga where, like, there are certainly stories where, you know, knowing the twist beforehand would oh, ruin yeah. the experience. This is not one of those stories. but <laughs> It really isn't. Super not. All right. So I guess we should do a, a little bit more in-depth summary walkthrough of major scenes arcs i actually when i was reading it i was like this is gonna be super hard i'm so confused about like what's a major thing <laughs> that's happening and what's not but i settled on two real world arcs and then like and a, a stand a, a, no see i don't know how we put as tail <laughs> and in the real world part one which i i think is my favorite part because i feel like it made the most sense wasn't off the rails yet. It's basically, you know, you get the setup of Aram and Iri. Is that how you're pronouncing it? Aram? That's how I was pronouncing it in my head. Yeah. <laughs> I was doing hard A. I was like, Aram. I think either way, like, it's not Japanese, so I think either way it makes sense. Iri is hard because it is Japanese, and it would be, like, the A and the second I are two separate characters, so it would be I-E-R-I. And that's just really hard for me to pronounce, so I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I did the review, and I think I'm saying something entirely different. That's okay. I'm sorry. It's hard. I, I only really know that because um, it actually makes me think of the character Airi in Erased, um, which was a really popular anime in like 2014. Why didn't I go off of that? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just, you're weird, I guess. Um, okay, sorry. Go ahead. Continue. Yeah, so then they meet, as as we said, Aram just comes out of a mirror. That's cool. Sets up the whole, like, oh my gosh, when Aram is locked in the dark, he becomes a hot 17-year-old, and Iris kind of like... So Iris told you in the beginning is that she wants a romance like her favorite TV series, I guess is equivalent to a daily soap opera thing in America called Tales of Marriage on the Plains, and she's like... We will slowly fall more and more in love as we get older and stuff. And then, so she's like going real hardcore. She's like, I won't even kiss anybody unless, like, I know that they're my soulmate. I'm like, this is absolutely ridiculous. Okay, just a little side note here. How are you envisioning this TV show that she's obsessed with? I was picturing it like a pretty, like, serialized like a soap opera but kind of more in the vein of a trashy romance novel 
See, I think I just went too literal on the title <laughs> of the series because then I was like, Little House on the Prairie? <laughs> 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 That is like some legit old school historic, like you meet one person and that is it, you know, type of series. And I was like, okay, she's hardcore. <laughs> it was hard to imagine because, you know, again, like we're American, so we can't help imposing our like America goggles on things True. that we read. True. So I was trying to be like, okay, what would a plane be in Japan and like all these things? <laughs> <laughs> that I was trying to get at and I was like I don't know I just think of some like really boring ongoing romance fan fiction like I basically was like this is yeah romance fan fiction of something where like some fan of something just wrote stories of cu couples that were already married but they love that couple so much and it's just boring stories from their daily life and like yeah I mean plain is in the title so I'm just <laughs> like this is gonna be boring as hell plain nothing. Jane. <laughs> if that's what you're into, you know, no judgment for sure. That's what you want, Ari. That's what you want. No judgment. It was just, it was interesting. <laughs> the way I imagined it, I was like, okay, homegirl wants to like wear a long dress, you know, have her wrists covered, you know, bonnet maybe. I was entirely different. I mean, I think there's certainly that conservative image is there, especially with the I won't kiss anybody until they're my <laughs> Yeah, I think that's so what really drove it home for me was just like, yeah. okay, sounds good. Uh, yeah, I mean, I got the, I guess I didn't get a good feel for where this manga was set, although they did name a location early on, and I didn't look it up. I'm just lazy. <laughs> I did not catch that at all. I was like, the I think magic they, they is named that a park know. or something. So I guess that could have been a clue. <laughs> Some serious sleuthing is not required. Yeah. <laughs> this Maybe it was an imaginary park. What do I know? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's not, I'm pretty sure they didn't drop that, like, it was Sapporo, which is where the author is from. Um, but yeah, so I didn't get a hard sense of where this was in Japan, but I guess I would assume that she was in a city, like, seeing, you know, she lived in an apartment. She went to, she, like, walked to school, seemingly, or something. So, like,. Yeah, I, I imagine she was like, I want to go live in an idyllic middle of nowhere place where it's just me and my love and we just fall more and more in love. I just love how unrealistic it is. I can't help it. <laughs> well, that's true. I mean, she does have a few like daydreams about one of her classmates. Na oh gosh, I it's practiced. It's Naka Oji. Naka Oji, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, so it was very like... Maybe what we would consider in America, like, middle class, you know, family of five. <laughs> yeah, so very, like, simplistic, I think. Or maybe not simplistic is not the right word, but very plain. Does she use the word plain? I don't know what she uses. Because, again, this plot line gets dropped hard. <laughs> like, because she has to kiss a rom, and then it's like, well, this dream's dead. <laughs> this dream is dead. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> I killed it. <laughs> Okay, so direct quote, it's the Bible of love I live by. The lesson is that true happiness is accumulated in modest little bits. Ah, modest. To have a great family, I need to start with a great boyfriend. <sighs> okay. <laughs> Don't we all, girl. No, I'm kidding. Don't we all, girl. <laughs> Girlfriend. <laughs> girl, <laughs> preach. No. Yeah. So that's what she's into. She's like very into being modest yeah and there's this really interesting tie that goes nowhere where she has the promise of punctuality oh yeah at her high school it's only in like chapter one the longer your punctuality streak the better your boyfriend will be right yeah that makes no sense to me but okay but i'm like constantly late all the time yeah <laughs> exactly i guess i wanted to look that up beforehand but like yeah it gets dropped dropped after chapter like Definitely by chapter, like, four. So <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. It's just kind of, like, tossed in there one time. She said it a couple of times. <laughs> um, because, like, a rom keeps coming to, like, disrupt her, and then she, like, has to run faster and faster each time to school to make it on time or whatever. You know, her dedication to being there on time would be for her education. I mean, I don't know. But okay, a man gets you there. Yeah, no. 
she is definitely shown like one of the first scenes is Nakaoji having to help her with some like I guess it was that she didn't do percentages of something like they were like you were supposed to put this in percentage not by number and then she's like oh no now I have to do it by head and like math is not my favorite thing Nakaoji's like it's cool I can do everything magically in my mind because I studied with like an abacus or something (laughs) well he's also the committee chairman and she's vice so you know proof to power man get the guy to do the work (laughs) <laughs> what is he doing you know let's show some leadership some initiative no i'm kidding i don't care he's <laughs> right? like a pretty good leader come on he is. <laughs> for the amount of time that he's actually in this series it's not really yeah i was more hopeful that he would be a stronger rival because uh he does eventually confess is his love to Irie, but uh no yeah. <laughs> i don't know why no. i ever thought that was gonna be <laughs> no for sure because like ara i'm just gonna say ara like straight up challenges him you know he's like i see what you're doing and i accept your challenge and i was like okay let's set this up and then nothing happens yeah aram just keeps kind of being like i hate you still but like that's (laughs) the extent of it i just don't like you and he says it like with his eyes and his body stance he doesn't really do anything to like show him he doesn't like him like what are some common tropes of rivals i think it's normally just grabbing the girl away which I think Probably. he does do. <laughs> Very possessive. I'm like, uh, okay. Possessive. Lying? There's not really a lot of lying. Yeah, everybody's too stupidly truthful. They are, but it's a very straightforward series. <laughs> Everyone's like, hard on their sleeves. I will say exactly what I mean. It's it's great. <laughs> no complexities. Or, you know, a series that's pretty complex. But yeah, uh, that was Real World Part 1. Yeah. And in the background, they're trying to, like, break this curse that's on her um, softcore. <laughs> trying to do that. Are they, though? Are they? <laughs> There's no real research done. There's no... Well, not that we saw. We don't like, see that because we're not background. in Aztec. Stall. True. Well, however, I feel like pronouncing it. <laughs> I'm sure, like, a Google search. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Solid Google search would have, uh, was Google around back in 2005? I guess so. <laughs> 2005. It's a different I'm time. Not that old. Okay. No. <laughs> yeah, it Listen, was. Google was invented in our lifetime. <laughs> it know. was there. <laughs> it's just or it's just been so much part of my life that I can't imagine it not being there. Like two years old, I was Googling, which is not true. So that's pretty much the first arc, right? Yes. And it was my favorite arc. It was simple. Like, Tales of Marriage on the Plains. I liked it. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Before, there's the end of that arc where Geely comes over and he's basically, like, kidnaps her and puts her in this really intense dress. Like, there's, like, off the shoulder. There's, like, a lot of ribbons. Her hair's in ringlets. He's into very frilly things, man. He is, but, you know, for her character, that's not really something she's into. He doesn't care what she's into? Not really, no. And then, at least like, not at that point. Wait it's pretty funny, though, because he does build a castle in the middle of a park. He's like, oh, we'll yeah. just live here. <laughs> it's like, okay, yep, that's that's the thought of a king right there, or a future king. See, that's when they named the park, and I don't remember what it's called. <laughs> I don't remember either. That's fine. <laughs> Readers or listeners, <laughs> tell us what park it was. Yeah. We can go look it up after and be like, oh. <laughs> then then stuff starts getting weirder in real world part two. Um, so there is a brief stint where they go, they all like, I read is in a stall. That's how I'm going to pronounce it now. Okay, I'm right there with you. And she like follows them because she gives the kiss. He turns back into little arm. And yeah, they, then she says his full name. Hey, Ashley, do you want to attend oh, to say Oh, God. <laughs> Wait, I need to see it at least written down in front of me. Yeah, okay, let's attempt this. I need to look at it, though. Do it. All right. To find a place where his full name is said. So, Aztail or Stall, whichever one you feel like going with, equals A equals Daemonia Eucharistia Aram. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm going with. <laughs> and that is correct. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? Is that correct? Who knows? <laughs> Sure, why not? 
Eucharistia, blah, 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 equal signs are in there. It's not a real name. This is a fake name. A fake name. <laughs> fake news. This does not fit on a driver's <laughs> license. Yeah. So that's fun. He has, yeah. Apparently, Irie figures out how to say all of that. I don't know. I guess she, she was told it at some point, so she's able to remember well, he that. Well, introduce himself, right? I mean, honestly, yeah. though, like... But, like, ever that's once. Would you really remember name? that? Would you really remember that? Yeah, I mean, like, come on, my name's Loyola. You know how long it took me to remember my own name? Like, five years old, name Loyola. It's hard. Aww. Okay, so yeah. <laughs> I know, sad. Yeah, so she says his full name, and then she gets transported into the mirror. What? what? Because she secretly has magic. Because yeah. she's a long-lost ancestor or whatever. She's a descendant of this place. So, yeah, that briefly happens. And then it becomes that everybody that was like in Aztail comes to the real world and goes to school because of course. <laughs> what? <Duh! laughs> uh, of course that happens. Of course that happens. And then GL is a teacher because that's what he is in Stall too apparently. So uh. he had, he this man has multiple hats. Let me just throw that out there because he's supposed to be you know the future king. He's mm -hmm. first in line. He's a prince. He's the commander of the Royal Army, and he's also a professor at the Royal Academy. And then he becomes a professor in the real world. I mean, like, that's way too many master's degrees. That's I mean, way too many master's degrees for, like, a 19-year-old. Yeah, he's 19! <laughs> what am I doing with my life? Manga setting the unrealistic expectations. For sure. My, my career trajectory is way off compared to, the, you know, what they set up. Yup. My favorite part of this arc in particular is how many tropes they do manage to cram into that, like, beach mini arc. Wait, oh my gosh. Okay, so I'm sorry. I just, I was flipping through the book. I just realized we forgot one of the most important parts when she's in Estelle, or Estrell. Blah, 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 blah. Magic She's in the other world. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Work around. She and Aram performed the vow. Oh, yeah. So, like, okay. Do you want to okay, I do want to describe my experience reading that. <laughs> okay, so for the listeners, let me just explain what happens. Okay, okay so she gets transported to Arm's land. And, um, yeah, so basically they kick her out of the, the royal guards, kick her out, and they throw her into the town. And she's basically wandering around in her pajamas, barefoot. Then she sees him at this royal ceremony that's taking place in front of, you know, the villagers. And Arm runs down to her, grabs her out of the crowd, and just, like, you know, carries her up the steps. And it's revealed that she's a descendant of the lady who left. And her name was Chris Nelly. Chris Nelly. No, I can't pass. Chris Nelly. <laughs> Chris Nelly. <laughs> sure for too. Nelly for short. <laughs> <laughs> Let's call her Nelly. Um, yeah, so she was the princess who ran away and is a traitor by their decree and so she goes to trial and to keep her out of the eternal prison uh Aram comes to the rescue and they make a vow of marriage which in this land is basically you kiss the person you intend to marry over their heart yes. and like a little tattoo forms <laughs> Oh, that so is cute. identical Little tattoo. to each other. <laughs> and what doesn't come apparent until later is that if someone else kisses you in that same spot, you die. It's instantaneous. That is so vulnerable. Yeah. Damn. I'm like, that is like a serious weakness. I mean, opposed to like guns or knives or something, but still. <laughs> pretty <laughs> it's intense. a pretty serious weakness. <laughs> yeah. And like, none of this is explained, right? Because it's like such fast pace and he's basically like, kiss me here. And she does, and then he's like, boom, vow to be married. Which, when I initially read this, I thought that was their, pretty much, you're married. That's it, you're done. No, apparently not. You have a real ceremony, eventually. Yeah, and it, it got me thinking, I'm like, how does divorce work in this you place? You don't like, have you know, divorce in this world, Loyola. Well, I'm just thinking, like, if someone, like, forced you, which I hope never happens in this fake little world, in, you know, in real life, too. That's, that's like, very intense, you know what I mean? Like, that's... I guess you just choose say the to word die. There's some magic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have to say the magic words first and then do the kiss. <laughs> and then they end up back at um, his room, and then she performs a kiss on him, which is pretty interesting because 
he turns into his older self and she performs the kiss. So it's not like she's inappropriately kissing a little boy. Is it not though? Uh, <laughs> Isn't it always? Visually, like if you don't know the context of what is happening in the story, yeah, it's questionable. It's very questionable. <laughs> I'm not even trying to defend it. <laughs> My experience reading this was the the page before. So for this, Aram is wearing like a, a belly-ish shirt, right? Yeah. And I was like, in the page before, I was like, oh, this panel where he's wearing the shirt, like, he actually looks pretty cool, kind of hot, like, cool. And then I flipped the page, and it's just, like, Irie kissing him. And I was like, mm, this got weird really fast. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I am not okay with this. This is very uncomfortable. Yeah, I was like, mm, okay. That was the part where I was like, I feel the vampire night heel here. Like, I feel it. Yeah, that's probably why it made me so uncomfortable, that series. But this one, I'm like, okay, so he's switching back and forth. It's... it's- it's less jarring. I don't know. It's still I don't jarring. know. They're both pretty, pretty strange and <laughs> smarmy feeling. Is why. Really inappropriate. I'm like, yeah, he looks older, but he still has the mind of a child, really. Yeah. And it creeps me out that his child mind is like, Irie is my favorite maiden. Please kiss me. I'm like, mm-hmm. He's pretty young, man. Like, seriously. <laughs> Like, I guess if he's 12, that's okay. But I definitely look at him and I'm like, you're eight. He does have a baby face. But his parents, too, when you do see them, they look pretty young grown. And they don't have names, by the way. I looked it up. I was like, what's the king and queen's name? No names. Just king and queen. Your majesty's highness. Okay, so yeah, that happens. And then everyone... And then they go to the beach, duh. This is a pretty key scene. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. And then they all go back to our world. And, yeah, then a lot of people from Estelle come with them. Beach party. <laughs> Beach party. <laughs> so we have Geely, who's his older brother, becomes a professor. Raz, who is just kind of there. <laughs> He's just like, yeah, I'm a student here now. Like, what? Why are you here? Yeah, what was his are? plan initially? Wait, what was he trying to do that first time? Oh, he just, like, oh, tried no. to, like, blatantly attack them or something? Basically. Oh, that's what it was. So... The king allows Arm to come to our world to learn about our customs and cultures, which is basically Japan. And he's like, if anyone finds out, you end up in the eternal oh, prison. Right. So that's what it was. So he was trying to be like, I am trying to make all your classmates figure it out at some point to ruin this super hard. Yeah, exactly. And so Raz comes because he's like, I'm going to destroy you for some apparent reason. It's never quite clear. And then, well, he was hired by the queen, right? Like the queen didn't. I At least for the for second when... one. Yeah, yeah. For the first one, I think he was just like, I'm spiteful that you're... you took the throne away from me. So uh. I don't know. Raz is a mystery. He's an enigma. Uh, and then Lee comes, which is. Did we even talk about Lee? Oh my gosh. Uh, uh, Lee is Arm's manservant, I think is the official title. And he comes, and he, he's a weird character too. I couldn't really get a grasp on what his deal was. He wants what's best for Arm, plus he's in love with the queen, changes. apparently. That's what so I got. <laughs> <laughs> it changes so often because he's like, okay, so Ari's best for him now. And then. Right. You gotta go with the flow, like, okay, Loyola. So you're no longer best for him, so I'm gonna try and keep you apart. Go I don't know. Flow. It's very, it's, it's interesting. And he's like, what, five years older than him? I'm like, do you really know? Nobody and then, knows. Uh, who else comes over? That's it, right? I think that's it. Because Maribel's not there yet. No, she doesn't come until later. Yeah. Okay, then yes, I think that's that's the whole beach party. Yay, beach party! Okay, and then they go to the beach party. Then they go to the beach party, and like tattoos become a, a big problem there because they're visible when you're at the beach. <laughs> they are, and uh, it's really interesting because Aram doesn't like that Ari is covering hers up and is basically like, you're my wife, and you are hiding that we are married. And remember, it's matching tattoos. So if you ever had, like, met a couple and they had matching tattoos, I don't know where you stand on that, but it's pretty annoying. Pretty annoying? (laughs) Ouch. (laughs) But in my mind, I'm like, what if you break up? Or, like, what if something happens? I mean, yes, that is where my mind automatically goes. (laughs) But that's not my business. (laughs) I'm just like, okay, fine, that's okay. 
Um, so wherever he stands on that, that's what they have now. Yeah. You want to talk about the theme here since it makes sense? Oh, right, 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 right. Okay, so the tattoos over the heart, uh, as we previously stated, you know, if someone else kisses it, uh, you die. So imagine if you had, like, your wedding ring and someone, like, I don't know, kissed your wedding ring and you were dead. I was like, wow. I don't think that happens all that often, but yeah. So I was equating this more along the lines to something along like cheating, like what constitutes cheating. I know it's different for each relationship and each couple has their own definition. And so this one was pretty interesting because, you know, this type of intimacy of like kissing someone over, you know, their heart leads to like literal death. Like, okay, you're done. <laughs> You're done. You're done. Nobody gets to love you anymore. Ha! And so it's just a really interesting theme. And then Ashley also brought up how in Japan it's not, would you say fashionable? Or what, what's the word you would use? I mean, as of right now, there's like actual laws that they're trying to like ban tattoos altogether. Wow. I did not know that. <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, the basic is that in Japan, tattoos have a very strong negative stigma against them. In looking this up, the one that everybody kind of knows is that like tattoos became fashionable among the Yakuza, which is like gangsters in Japan. So they use that to like identify themselves and stuff like that. Um, So that's not cool. But then also apparently getting a tattoo is just seen as being disrespectful to your parents because they gave you life. I don't know, Japan. <laughs> That's what I'm um, but so obviously this manga came out 12 years ago. So it's all of these things are not like necessarily super applicable to then. But as of like the past couple months, Japan, at least in Osaka, there was a court ruling that like a tattoo artist was cited for he was doing tattoos without a medical license. And he was like, That's ridiculous. Nobody's going to go to medical school to become a tattoo artist so he tried to appeal but then the court like upheld that so now apparently the law in japan is that in order to be a tattoo artist you have to have a medical license and so people are like that's just like effectively you're trying to ban tattoos and i mean the thing about the beach thing that was interesting to me is that in japan if you have a tattoo a lot of places like hot springs and stuff won't let you in because they think it's um, not pure and would like defile the uh, place where you're supposed to go get pure. So I was just very like it was weird to me reading this and you know because Ari's classmates are there and they are all like what are these weird tattoos and blah 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 and I'm like I'm not sure that they're reacting like negatively enough from what I understand to this tattoo especially in this setting and it was interesting to me that like the tattoo would be used as a way to be like I mean, I guess that could be some sort of elaborate metaphor of, like, you get a tattoo and you can never remove it. It's permanent. Your relationship is now permanent, too. Ah, I get it. But, like, the tone of this manga is not at all that, so it doesn't make sense for it to have been that. Yeah, so I just found it all very strange. I was like, this does not line up with what I understand of anything. And also, that's a very extreme marriage pact, so cool. (laughs) For sure. I mean, it's pretty interesting. Because when, when you were talking, and, and thank you for sharing all that, I had no idea. Yeah. I guess in, like, America, it's not as big of a deal. Because I noticed that employers are less and less um, strict on covering tattoos in the workplace. Yeah. And piercings. And so I guess it didn't really, like, occur to me, like, how culturally this may be different. Which is horrible, because, you know, as an American reading... <laughs> I mean, like, you got to be aware. Yeah. <laughs> and it's pretty interesting. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I guess it's also interesting because the, the, the thing about Japan, too, is that, like, there, there's, like, a culture clash because one of the ways that they're trying to, like, help their economy get out of its stagnation is by increasing tourism. But, yeah, because in America, we're so much more lax about it. Like, in my workplace, people talk about getting new tattoos all the time they're like oh yeah i want to get this tattoo like somebody has both their arms are covered in tattoos and stuff like nobody cares (laughs) Um, (laughs) so like they want to increase tourism but again they ban people who have tattoos from like onsen and stuff but that's also a prime thing that people in america want to go experience when they go to japan 
So there's a whole, like, do you make exceptions for foreigners? And, like, Tokyo is going to host the 2020 Olympics. So, like, tourism is going to greatly increase. There's going to be more people with tattoos. Like, what tattooing among Olympians is really popular because if they win a medal, they want to, like, commemorate it by getting a tattoo and stuff. So there's just, like, this whole big culture clash happening there. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> this, is, this is a lot. <laughs> well, I guess we should clarify that, you know, not the faith. <laughs> <laughs> no, tattoo, like, not your face. You can get a tattoo, but don't tattoo your face. Don't be Justin right? Bieber. <laughs> That's so weird. I guess neck is more acceptable now, but that was also one where it's like, yeah, you can have tattoos, just make sure you cover them. And I don't know, it's interesting. So yeah, that's the scene that happens. And uh, they do discover that they have matching tattoos. Um, at one point, Aram becomes little Aram. And... They don't notice that little Aram and Ari have the same tattoo. And they even take him to a bath, which is really Hey, don't think about it. <laughs> don't think about it. Don't question it. Don't question these <laughs> things. <laughs> if you start questioning things, the questions will never end. <laughs> and then the whole thing unravels and then no one's held accountable. Um, but yeah, so that was the bathhouse or the beach scene. Oh wait, no, then they have the best part, the best part. Oh yeah. Where they pretty much go on like, what would you call it? Like a spooky walk? Oh yeah, they had they the like, like the test groups. of courage. Yeah, it's a the pretty common, common trope in like Maid Sama. It's in Maid Sama and Cardcaptor Sakura of the other manga that I've covered on this podcast so far. <laughs> <laughs> so we can say it's a trope. It's officially a trope. No. Yeah. <laughs> no. um, so yeah, so of course our trio is Aram, Ari, and who's the last one? Naka Oji. Yeah. And so she gets scared and basically runs off, of course. And then she runs into who but Raz. Yay! Yay. And then he tries to kill her. Yay! <laughs> then it gets weird. <laughs> so this is where we learn about the actual kiss of death. And he's basically, I can end you with a kiss. And he has her, like, pinned up against the rocks and is, like, gonna kiss her. And then she... That's why this is a bad system. Bad system. <laughs> <laughs> no one got the system through. Yeah. And so basically she's like, it's not about, like, I'm going to die. I should stop this. It's basically, like, Arm kissed me there, so don't do that. Which is... Whatever keeps you alive, I guess. Whatever keeps you motivated. <laughs> but then, like, her initial reaction is to, like, shove him away and then jump off the cliff into the ocean. Which, you know, I've been to the ocean and that shit is rocky as hell. So, well, actually, the one they're at is pretty rocky. It's okay. She was fine. <laughs> <She's> like, <laughs> it's all fine. It's fine. Clearly okay. good plan we're, in the end. <laughs> Whatever keeps you alive. <laughs> yeah. And... Then Roz gets arrested by Lee and by Jili, and they go swimming in the ocean. And basically, she surrenders and is like, I care so much for him. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? Because this is inappropriate. <laughs> <laughs> so, even after the marriage and after all the stuff that's happened, and this is like the beginning of volume three, and it's basically like, okay, I've given in to my feelings. I'm yes. all in. Yeah. This is when you know, like, Nakaoji has no chance anymore. <laughs> if he ever did. He really wasn't in the fight, honestly. <laughs> like, there wasn't a lot going on with him. Which is so interesting, because, like, the last chapter of the series just is, like, mind-blowing. But we'll get there. I'm kind of starting to question if shoujo manga ever does a rival character in a believable way. Like, I think the answer is no. I don't know. I mean, uh, Love Calm did a pretty good rival character. And it was a combination of, like, bad timing, bad decisions, and, okay, I'm, like, a little bit of betrayal. One. So I think that's kind of where the what is constitutes cheating comes up is, like, it's a good one. It's really good. Hmm. But, yeah, I think they did okay. I mean, it didn't last long, though. <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking characters. of, like, Yuatase manga and, like, Maid Sama. They all typically have rival characters. But you're like, yeah, did you just? No. It's not, it's not going to no. happen. <laughs> Let's see. I'm thinking of also like high school host club. I don't know. Have oh, you heard yeah. that one? Oran. They they do a pretty good job of like keeping it ambiguous. I mean, we all know like really what's gonna happen. But... <laughs> I was gonna like, say, kind of is it? <laughs> <laughs> Basically, and I, yeah, I think they they did a pretty good job in some chapters and some 
portions of the story where you're like, they could end up together. And I like that because there wasn't just one rival. I guess they were all trying to rival to all each other. Rivals <laughs> all the know. time. So yeah, so after the beach scene, um, they have this really interesting scene too where Arm gets sick and he basically asks her to feed him by mouth and he's in his little arm body. And yeah. That was weird. It was weird to me also because it was translated as feed, but I was like, but it's not food. Like, he wants water. <laughs> so confused. <laughs> I'm infinitely confused by this scene. Yeah, with these translations, I'm like, okay, you can summarize what just happened. <laughs> There's pictures there to help you. <laughs> There's pictures there. And then Arum is like, let me show you. And I'm like, okay, 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 that just happened. We did it. <laughs> I was also legitimately confused about why he got sick, though. Whatever. I don't know. It's, <laughs> it's just for fun. It's a trope. <laughs> he got sick. I gotta take care of him. I just thought that the <laughs> sickness would be part of something greater like some greater plot that i don't think it ever was and i was just like okay i guess he was just he just had a fever okay (laughs) people just get sick ashley god okay (laughs) not everything has to be significant in the story ashley (laughs) calm down (laughs) uh no um but it was pretty funny to like I don't know. I guess it's just pretty funny to see him get sick. And then you're just like, all right, you just, you know, put your mouth together. Like, why aren't you sick? Yeah, exactly. That's why I was like, but wait, if you're actually sick, like, she definitely should not feed you by mouth unless there's some greater weird conspiracy happening. And you know that it's not actually a sickness. This is why I was confused. See? <laughs> yeah, there you go. And it was just, it's just so weird because it's like this little boy is asking her to do this to him. Yeah. And that's just wrong. I was like, oh, little child. Like, what? Little child. No, he's cool. He's cool. <laughs> well, he knows what he's about. Yeah. He's picking up on his kinks. He knows what he's doing. And then, so they're out for a while. And then, dun, 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 Mary yeah. Bell shows up. Mary Bell, Bell shows up, yeah. Say it real fast, Mary Bell. Maria yeah, Maribel. Maria Bell or Maribel? I think it's Nobody Maribel. I I'm starting agree on this to one. feel like I don't know how to read. <laughs> That's how I always feel. <laughs> like, do you know how to read? Seriously, I don't know how to read. Manya definitely makes me feel like I don't know how to read. <laughs> So yeah, so um, she is Aram's betrothal back in Estelle, but he decided to go with Ari, and so this little girl, she's the same age as Aram, but she shows up in her teenage form, and which is, it's kind of How can she these- do that? I don't understand. They just, she's like, I, ring. <laughs> she's like, I know the magic spell that does this, and I'm just not going to. No, she has a ring. Remember they meet oh, on the yeah, roof of the school. This <laughs> like these rings are awesome. Like I think they're pretty cool. <laughs> they're pretty uh, cool. <laughs> and it's just so funny because you know you're having this influx of students to this school, and they all know each other, and they're all getting placed in the same class. <laughs> that was uh, pretty great. <laughs> of course. Of course. That's how the Japan school system works. Apparently, all the you just get all the people in there. That's why I'm thinking this isn't a city. It's probably like a small, like... No, I think that just happens in manga. (laughs) (laughs) Stop trying to justify it. Just trying to justify it. (laughs) Of where transfer students are placed. Yeah. (laughs) Um, So they meet on the rooftop, and um, basically Maribel is upset that Arm chose Ari, and she's like, I have a gift for you. Do not take gifts from your rival people, because... Ari takes this gift for on Arm's behalf because she's very upset that Maribel's crying on the rooftop. And guess what? Amnesia. Amnesia happens. Amnesia oh, happens. I love them amnesia romances. They're so <laughs> great. Um, and so basically this little box steals Arm's memories of Ari and he don't know who she is. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. So now anybody can kiss these fools and he'll be like... <laughs> Did. Did, did, did. <laughs> Thank you, but no. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure there's not a spell to bring them back. 
So he forgets her. And guess what? Lee is in on it because we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and Roz, too. And the queen. Everybody's in on it. Damn. And the queen. And Maribel. <laughs> and I don't know. <laughs> Everybody's in on it. Except it's a conspiracy. It goes all the way to the top. It does. So he's in his large form when he loses his memory. And um, basically the way they explain his arm is that they're protecting him from Geely by keeping him in this world, which is a pretty flimsy excuse. I don't know. Because if you're not allowed to travel between the worlds, like, why? <laughs> <laughs> Magic. <laughs> Magic, of course. Plot device, that's why. And so, you know, Ari turns into a little bit of a stalker. And I think this is when we really see Nakoji come to Ari and be like, hey, here's this cassette. It's a cassette tape. That's how old this oh, is. Oh, yeah. Which is weird because she was we had taping these. that shit <laughs> on TV. <laughs> With a VCR? I was like, okay, cool. That's a VCR, man. Um, yeah, earlier Nikoji borrowed Tales from the Plane. No, wait, what is it? Tales, Tales of, of marriage, marriage on the Plains. Come on. on the plane. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I guess I envision that there are multiple couples that that show follows because. Good point. Marriage. It's plural. Tales. I don't know. I, I, I just assume that there has to be multiple couples on that show. <laughs> I like how in depth we think this series is. Listen, I really want to write like tales of marriage on the planes, like fan fiction. Like, I really hope that that exists already. And if it does, please send it to me. I want to read it. How many layers down are you in this? Like, seriously. I need to know. I need to like. Uh, you, this goes really deep. Whenever you make a story within a story, like it's deep. It goes it goes hard. That's awesome. And so he, he brings the tape back to her of the movie that he borrowed, and she was like, no, you can have it. So this is where she gives up on her actual, like, rejection of a simple relationship, which really, what relationship is simple, honestly? Yeah, and so she goes to confront Maribel, and she's basically, I will make him remember me. Classic. Classic, Classic. response. <laughs> right in your face. You're going to remember me. It's like, um, okay, I'm kind of forming new memories right now so yeah <laughs> Good job. It's like make me fall in love with you again <laughs> that would have been that would have made more sense you know what i mean yeah <laughs> so like you'll remember me i was like oh okay <laughs> crazy person thank you i mean she goes to destroy the box it makes sense <laughs> yeah that's true so then she's trying to get help from geely and he he's really obsessed with her which is kind of funny but she's just flat out like no you weirdo get away from me Proper response. Proper response. Yeah. So she goes to school the next day, and this is where she feeds him by mouth water. <laughs> so how would you phrase that? Not provide water by mouth, mouth like... to mouth water. Mm, sexy. <laughs> it like spit and stuff, but that's cool. Um, <laughs> Made it extra crazy. warm just to go into your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> so tasty. Yeah. <laughs> Stop. There's some warm water for you. Warm, warm water. Warm. I brushed my teeth brushed before so it could be a little minty. <laughs> like... <laughs> it's not even room temperature. It's like body temperature. <laughs> okay, so and this is where she confesses to him and he's like, I don't remember you. And he's like, that's okay. I still love you. And he's like, okay, I don't know who you are. <laughs> it's funny because this next part is... Basically, he's like, that was humili humiliating, um, and I will not pardon you for it, when she feeds him by mouth with water. And I was like, okay, so there's a little bit of humiliation going in here. So, like, he asked her to do it when she was, you know, when he was sick, and now he she did it for him again, and he was like, nope, that's wrong. Was his being sick just all set up for this this forgetting <laughs> arc? Like, that's a terrible thing. <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> people don't just get sick to get sick at Bingo. There's yeah. a purpose. There has to be a purpose. And it was this water in the mouth thing. This water change. <laughs> this is body temperature water <laughs> yeah, it was body temperature water. <laughs> so he gets sick. Of course, they go to the infirmary, which is, of course, another trope. And he's still in his big body. And Ari leaves. Maribel enters, and then he turns into little arm. So before, when she gave him the maiden's kiss, it was almost instantaneous. And so now that he forgot her, it's taking some time. So this is kind of where I want to stop a little bit and talk about the maiden's kiss. 
Um, yeah. It's pretty interesting because typically for the maiden's kiss to work, you have to kiss them on the head at somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> First, they're like, okay, the cheek is fine. You can kiss them on the lips, which is what works here. But I was like, okay, so when they were doing the the vow exchange when they got married and they kissed them over the heart, he didn't change back. You know, she kissed him over the heart and then he told her to kiss him on the cheek so he could revert back to his little body. And she did. And it was just interesting because I was like, so that kiss just on the head or is it like on the body somewhere? Like, I, what is the deal with this kiss and where should it be placed? I mean, yeah, they, at first they're like, it just has to be on the cheek. Then she started always doing it on his chest, right? <laughs> yeah, and I was like, okay, this is cool. Like, <laughs> Sometimes it was on the lips. So I was like, you know, it, it doesn't matter where it is. You could kiss like his hair probably. <laughs> Right, exactly. So I was like, um, let's get a time frame on how this works. Let's get but a time frame on how this works. <laughs> Maybe it has to be sexy enough. It has to be like you wanted it enough. <laughs> it has to advance the plot. That's basically what's going on. It has to advance the sexy plot. Didn't you read all the side notes about how it's not erotic enough? <laughs> you gotta be more erotic. More erotic. I was like, really? That's, let's, that's let's the notes you get from your editor? It. <laughs> we're also like talking about a 12 year old this is not yeah okay. i was like this is not okay okay manga's weird <laughs> <laughs> that cannot be the end of everything manga is weird manga's weird Let it go. make it gotta, erotic this podcast harry is about potter <laughs> part. we're talking about the issues. issues how does this affect us as a nation as a society <laughs> yeah consuming <laughs> international media <laughs> yeah i don't know i didn't have anything set up the global um, phenomenon. <laughs> <laughs> That's only four volumes. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> so the maintenance kiss is pretty interesting. It has to come from the prince's favorite lady, which is her. And it's kind of noted that Geely, his brother, has Minnie, a favorite lady. So He still ranks them, though. So he has to have a favorite, favorite lady. Yeah, like what if your favorite changes? We were like, hey, man, you're cool, but, you know. There I mean, also... I guess that is interesting in... Because it does both set up, you can never get divorced because there is this tattoo that will kill you over your heart if somebody else kisses you there. But also polyamory? This right. one's confusing. <laughs> so confusing because I'm like, that, that's the other part too is that it's polyamorous. Like they actually say you can have more than one wife. And I guess Aaron decided that he was only going to have one wife. So. But like also, but his, his, his father, t well, I guess it was the polyamory thing though because... His father officially married his second favorite person after the first wife died. So, like, yeah. it's not all just, like, divorce and stuff, you know? Like, like, okay, does the, you know, marriage seal go away when someone dies? That's not cool because, you know, some people still wear their wedding rings after someone dies. But then they also call her a concubine. So I'm like, okay, this might be just some translation this is some translation wonkiness. <laughs> <laughs> now you're appropriating another culture, and I'm like, okay, this is weird. Oh, yeah, so we should probably make that clear that Geely and Aram are actually half-brothers. Yes. Different moms, same dad. Same dad, different okay. mommies. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else about the maiden's kiss at this point? No. Okay, that's good. Yeah, you're the one who read, <laughs> I feel like you've read a lot more romance novels than I have. Does that help you in reading shoujo manga? I'm curious. It's interesting. Well, first, your answer is yes. Um, yes. <laughs> yes, let's start there. Um, because it's also interesting how different the relationships are set up and how, I guess, the parameters of the relationship are a little different, but also very similar in that, you know, what constitutes cheating? What constitutes us being in a relationship? Are we going to talk about this relationship? You know, what type of communication do they have? And a lot of the time with romance novels, they tend to have like another plot going on mm -hmm. at the same time, like a murder, mystery, a theft, something else going on, blackmail. Right. Whereas I think this one, it's a lot more like the communication is that, that I love you and that's about it. <laughs> or like grand gestures uh -huh. of love. I don't know. Maybe it's just the ones I'm reading. Maybe it's just the ones I'm reading. <laughs> the luck of the draw. <laughs> Okay, so back to the story. So in the infirmary, Barry leaves, Marybelle enters, and Arm goes down to little Arm, and he thinks Marybelle did it. And she's like, yeah, that was totally me. 
And then um, they decide to go back to Estelle. And um, Ari follows them there. And she's immediately placed in prison, kind of. Well, no, that's where we see Raz. And Maribel hands Raz back the little box that contains um, Arm's memories. And he's like, hey, what's up? It was me the whole time. Bum, bum, bum. And yeah, she's immediately thrown in prison. That's what happens, I guess, in this weird land. Danger! Danger is real in this. Danger, danger. Yeah, they're definitely afraid of this guy. <laughs> they're really afraid of her. Like, they throw her in prison with bars and shit immediately in a dungeon. Uh, so yeah, Julie comes, saves her. He becomes one of her, his maids, I guess. His maid outfit, oh yeah, so. she dresses in a maid outfit. Which is pretty cool. Call pretty back to cool. the previous series covered on this podcast, Maid Sama. So yeah, um, Julie comes, saves her, and they, we're just doing a play-by-play at this point. <laughs> <laughs> You're just doing a play-by-play. I'm doing a play-by-play. No, You're I'm like, I'm so excited. <laughs> it just seems like very important to conveying what happens in this arc. No, so anyway. And then there's this tower where her grandmother was supposed to live with her betrothed, and um, no one goes in because no one can come out, which is magic, I guess. And um, Raz puts the box there in the tower. So she runs and she goes to it to free his memories, arms memories. And yeah, that's where Raz has his big grand villain, I guess. I don't even know what to call it because he's not really like saying what his goal is. He's just kind of talking. Yeah. Hey, he's, he's not really, <laughs> like he's not really a villain. He's just kind of like, eh. Yeah. The queen told me to do a thing and I did it because I have... Been, I have been set up to have story motivations that I will not clearly tell not you. Feel. Yeah, like I will not clearly tell you if I buy into those story motivations that have been set up or not. But you know. right, <laughs> and it's it's funny because we don't find out the queen did it all until like half the chapter after. But it's still kind of like okay, you got her here. She's in the tower with you. You, you have the memories. You essentially won. This is what you wanted. Yeah, he's kind of like. Yeah, it was my grandpa's box. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my grandpa. He tells this her the sad story of, of his grandfather. <laughs> like, I actually thought that that story about his grandfather and how he used the box, I was like, oh, I'm, I'm genuinely kind of sad and touched yeah. by this side story. So it was basically that Irie's great-grandmother had spurned Roz's uh, great-grandfather. So then the way the great-grandfather used the box was to lock his memories away of... The, uh, the the woman who spurned him so that he would forget. And I'm like, oh. Oh, that was genuinely sad, actually. Yeah, that was really sad. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me more I, about I that story. Write that manga. There. Come on. <laughs> yeah, see, that's what I mean. It was such a great, like, there's so many great things going on um, for the side characters, but that's about it. So, yeah, and then he's like, this box can never be opened. And then Arm shows up, and of course, they open it. <laughs> through magic I don't, I'm not exactly sure there's like a the bright power light. of love Loyola always opens everything <laughs> come on <laughs> love is magic come love on love is magic that's the point that's always the point <laughs> that's always the point and Iron gets his memories back and then he's like my heart hurts like I cannot believe I forgot you and he's like it hurt to see you but it hurt more not to see you and I thought that was really cute oh, um, so yeah and then Roz is like okay I was like, cool. I mean, I thought the box couldn't be open, but you opened it, so I guess I lost by. <laughs> I guess that's it. Um, for someone who, like, the last time he saw her was trying to kill her with a kiss, like, I'm like, your motivation has plummeted, guy. I really like, think that he just kind of likes her and doesn't want to admit it. Yeah, but I don't know. Do you kill someone you try to like? I mean, like, I don't know. I don't think he likes her enough at that to. point. Then he changed and didn't want to kill her anymore. <laughs> he spent like no time with her. It was like, why? Okay. Manga, it doesn't matter. Manga. <laughs> <laughs> Tropes. <laughs> what happened? And then that's kind of the end of that arc. And that's kind of where it ends, right? Yeah, I mean, the rest of the manga is just like, Iri has to go to school to learn magic. Yeah, and then they have to find her grandmother's ring that... Yeah, all the nobles get born with a ring. It doesn't matter because um, nothing happens from it. Nothing um, happens from like it because few... they get married. Yay! Yay! And it's like years later, so it jumps into the future without really telling you. 
And then there's a few like side stories. You get to develop a little bit more of the characters, the side characters. Um, there was one that was really interesting with Maruru. Is that right? Maruru? Yes, Maruru. Well, believe that I'm going to say Maruru because that's fun to say. Um, <laughs> it's basically this little fairy that follows Prince Julie around. And yeah, it's a cute little story about a little fairy who mistakens a ribbon for a flower and she needs the flower's life essence to live. And then Geely, you know, takes the ribbon and he ties it to his hair and then ties a piece to her hair and is like, you can live off of my life essence. And it's like, oh my God, that's so cute. Like, where's that story? I know. I'm like, that sounds like the much better manga here. (laughs) (laughs) And then there's another story of Prince Geely running across this really beautiful girl and he gives her a flower and in the garden and then finds out later it's Lee. (laughs) (laughs) And it's just this whole thing where he's like, my first love was a boy. And I was like, hey, man, let's do it. Let's let's talk about this, you know? (laughs) (laughs) And then we have Polyamorous bisexual. Why not? Why not? Do it. Yeah. Like, I follow that king. Like, yeah. (laughs) Own it. And we get a few pages of Lee and the queen, Aram's mother, having a little, you know, sexual tension going on Again, there. where's that manga? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And she was like, if he's giving you so much trouble, just quit. And then he's like, you know I can't quit. You're so mean. You're so cruel. And he's like, you know I love you. And I was like, oh my god, what the hell? Like, this is amazing. And then there's a few, not even a few panels of me, uh, Lee's twin sister, who is betrothed to Geely. And he can't look at her because he's constantly reminded of Lee. <laughs> and I was like, I'd like to see a few more chapters on this. This is interesting. Because at the end of the series entirely, they actually are married and have two children. So it's right. they actually end up together. But it's like, okay, what's that story? How do you... How do you get from, like, I can't look at your face because you're, like, reminding me of this humiliating moment to, hey, we're married and we have two kids and I'm king now. Eternal and also darkness. king and queens don't necessarily retire in our world, but they do there. So apparently <laughs> that, was, that was interesting. So, yeah. And then there's, like, mm-hmm. this really interesting part where Aram and Ari have their wedding and she's basically, like, it's his 17th birthday. And it's her 20th birthday. So that's kind of where I got the age from. I still think that that 20 was a lie, though. Yeah, Ashley is like, she's lying. She's not 20. And I was why like, did, why, why did she cough? I don't understand. <laughs> I think it was just like, I'm 20. And it's like, you don't really want to admit how old you are. So you kind of mumble it. I don't know. Ashley thinks she's a liar. I was like, okay, I they're at their older, wedding home. <laughs> don't lie at that point. <laughs> But then we find out that the uh, king and queen, who are retired, which again, weird, have a hundred year age difference. So age works differently in this weird land. And I was like, let's talk about that. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. That didn't make any fuck? sense. So I was like, what <laughs> are you talking about? <laughs> let's talk about Is that. Is Irie going to live to be 300 something years old? <laughs> yeah. And then <laughs> there's just so much in these last few chapters. It's amazing. We see this little girl um, trying to summon a demon, and she does, and it's Raz, and Raz is <laughs> like, what the hell, so how did I get here? And she's like, demon, I need you to kill my brother, which again, weird family dynamic. And guess who walks in? Nakaoji? Nakaoji! And it's like, what the heck? Your sister can do magic? What the hey? Who's your family? And then we find out that Nakaoji may be the descendant of the Grand Magician. The Grand Magician is basically the founder of the political structure in a cell. He basically set up the seven families, grew to hate how that dynamic was working, and just peaced out. And he went to our world, and that's his grandson. It's crazy, right? Because Ari imagined her life of Tales of Marriage on the Plains life with him. Something plain and simple, but it wasn't. She was going to end up with someone from a stall a whole time, maybe, if there wasn't another. See, this one, I was like, no, nah, you took it too far. I don't care. <laughs> I care a lot. <laughs> like, well, clearly, you that? care a lot. <laughs> yeah. 
You're a descendant. You're each descendants of this world. Anyway, that concludes the series. You ruined it, Ashley. I was going off on a high note and I just fell. That's me. That's how I roll. You know what my favorite side <laughs> comic was? <laughs> it was, uh, I don't think it was at the end. It was like maybe in chapter three. It was one of those four panel ones. And it was like alternate encounter of the very beginning. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like she goes back and finds that Aram has found the mirror. And then she's like, okay, cool. Keep it. And then walks away. End of manga. <laughs> The end. That's it. <laughs> Woo! She leaves a child destitute. That's it. No yeah. Kidding. Did you ever find yourself staring at the uh, seven pointed star? Like, I kept trying to stare at it to figure out how it was drawn and it, it hurt my brain, so I stopped. I did, and I tried to draw it one time and it just did not work it out. It just did not work like, out. <laughs> like, fuck it, I'm gonna trace it. And I traced it and it worked out. <laughs> Aww. I'm a tracer. What are you going to do? Tracing for the win. I just got to, you know. Got so you got to carry that, that wet second grade art with you. Just yeah. trace it. <laughs> just trace it. So those are the main arcs of the story. And it just kind of ends there. We just took you through the play-by-play -play of the whole series. But it's good. I liked it. I liked it a lot. It's really problematic in a lot of places, but great. I mean, I can deal with some problematic things, but I think... I, what I'm learning is that Vampire Night author brand of problematic. I'm like, mm, not on board with that. No. <laughs> not okay. Not okay. Not yeah, a, I not think cool. it's not cool. And I think at one point you, you're you reading it and you're like, oh, geez, I don't know about this. Am I on board with this? And I think with this one, it's so short. And the way she planned when he's in his big body versus when he's in his little body it doesn't it's very intentional of course <laughs> and then um the way he speaks when he's younger and he's older is very similar at the same time so you really don't like get a sense of him resorting to his little body and then back to his older body which i think you know you really can't do an anime with that because you know you're talking like a little boy and then you're talking like person who's almost a grown man and you're like it's getting weird <laughs> yeah and this voice work is getting a little weird so probably gonna stick to the manga <laughs> yeah. um were there any other themes we didn't didn't touch on but you want to talk about yeah so the one that struck me the most was i was like okay we got this image of a mirror that's like normal in fairy tales right like mirror mirror on the wall who's the fairest of them all cool 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 but i was like okay what's the function of a mirror um, reflecting things, which this mirror does not, I mean, like, we're shown that Irie, I guess, sometimes uses it in that way. Um, the ending panel is using it to reflect back, like, she's, like, looking into it, and then moves it a little so that it also shows Rom in the background. She's like, I'm so happy, teehee, whatever. Um, but this mirror is obviously also a portal into a different world, different time, I guess, <laughs> because of, it comes from her, her grandmother, great great however many greats there are to it i don't know it's easier to just say grandmother <laughs> <laughs> even though grandmother is kind of an off-screen actual character in the manga yeah so then i was struck by how like a lot of the things in this manga are very cyclical and reflect each other like the past reflects the what's happening in the present yeah just stuff like that so i was just really struck by the image of the mirror and like I think that the manga does not go hard enough into things like exploring the repercussions of things like, yeah, so Roz wants to punish Ari for things that her great-great-grandmother did. Is that morally justified? Is it not? Like, these are debates that we have horrible, horrible big debates over now, over, like, real-world things, <laughs> like uh, <laughs> reparations for any stolen land from black people in america from native americans like these are things that like are really hard to solve that the manga is just like eh, shrug whatever like <laughs> and i was like mm, okay but like they are repeating what happened in the past that everybody agreed was a terrible thing like aram is marrying somebody that he's not supposed to marry <laughs> like ari is now coming back illegitimately to the throne and i'm like mm, this makes me this makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> like It uh, is. It is very yeah. um uncomfortable when you get down to like the I guess legal ambiguity. I mean like I don't have their law book or anything. But like forcing a descendant to pay for 
you know, a crime they didn't commit. Like, yeah. they were ready to throw her in the prison, like, the eternal prison. Which, you know, based on the name, I'm just assuming it's forever. And it's just, like, immediate, instantaneous. But also when you take in their... I guess they're not as strict about age and time as we would be. Mm-hmm. Because they live a long time. Um, their okay. descendants live a long time. So even though it's probably Raz's, like great-grandfather whereas it's Ari's great-great-great-great-grandmother you know Mm -hmm. so that time between the two you know it's like not a big deal for her she was like I don't even know this lady I just have her mirror (laughs) (laughs) now I got a ring too like whoever (laughs) that's cool I met her once that's awesome she looks just like me which is super weird yeah whereas with Raz it was like not that long ago and I think it's um, kind of telling about like how far you distance yourself from history so, you know, talking about Native American history here, uh, African American history, Asian American history here, it's it's something a little bit more closer to us than to others may feel. So it's really interesting that you bring that up, because that was also something I was thinking about when I first read the book, actually. So it was pretty intense. Yeah. I guess I hadn't considered that, like, because of the passage of time being different in the real world, that for Roz it would be closer just because they all live longer, possibly. Because, again, the age thing is not really explored in a way that, like, makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> so concrete, yeah. Yeah. I'm like, but, but like, Aram still aged the same, like, as a young person. So, like, what happened? You just get, you're just old for a, a long time, I guess? I don't know. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> I mean, it is interesting that when she introduces herself, you know, she's like, well, is, I think she said she's an Aries or something and then she lists her age and her name and when she introduces herself and they don't really do that they just say they're the land that they're from the family that they're from and then their actual name mm-hmm. so you know that whole introductory process is completely different because I guess age isn't important to them <laughs> maybe that's why Ari coughs after she says 20, because now she's been living there, and she's like, I don't know how old I am anymore. Probably. My mind is blown. <laughs> My mind is... Are we measuring in dog years? Did we switch? Yeah, like, how rate? have I aged? Okay, I'm willing to accept this more now. See? Look. Okay. Get on my level of acceptance. <laughs> yeah. Get <on>. Damn it. <laughs> A good podcast. It's really A good great. podcast. Podcast where you think about things differently. <gasps> yeah. Where your whole mind is blown and you're like, oh, the story maybe makes more sense when you think of it that way. <laughs> cool. Yeah, so I, I, I enjoyed the, like, semi-exploration of mirrors and mirroring, but I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this manga is not serious enough to uh, actually handle those issues. What? Are you not going to write a thesis paper on this? Oh Come my on. gosh. Are you Loyola? <laughs> You're the one who wrote it on a <laughs> romance novel. <laughs> I did and I killed it. Knocked it out of the park. Killing it. Sure. Bam. <laughs> uh, okay, so should we go on to the love quiz? Yes, love quiz time. So now it's time for love quiz you all know that this comes almost every episode i think there was an episode where we didn't do it where sorry (laughs) (laughs) you can't say a staple then can you yeah yeah it's a staple of this podcast but you know this is the the fun part so the quiz that we shall take we are taking it as gl right (laughs) yeah yeah just pronounce it how you pronounce it yeah J. We're taking it as J. <laughs> this is what I'm going to call him now. It is in 17. Don't act so familiar with him. No, Don't okay. act so familiar with him. That was like also another trope because she almost gets beat up in a bathroom. <laughs> oh, yep. and she's on a cell in like at the Royal Academy or whatever the hell. She oh, yeah. Great. This manga she is so tropey. I love it. You had to throw that one in there. Couldn't end the series without it. Yeah. You... <laughs> it was like, how many can I cram in? Two, four volumes. The challenge I'm accepted. I'm sure she had a checkbox. I, pr- I think oh, she did. <laughs> Got it. Jump off a cliff. Got it. Amnesia. <laughs> Got it. Sorry, go ahead. Set up the love quiz. <laughs> yes. Um, so this one is from Seventeen Magazine, and it is, Why are you single? And we know that GL has many, many ladies, but, like, 
he doesn't really love them, right? Like, he's very confused. So the, the subtitle is, There's nothing wrong with being single, but if you're wondering why you're not currently dating anyone, this quiz can help you pinpoint the real reason. I love you, Seventeen Magazine. Solve all my problems. <laughs> all right. Question one. Or, yeah, it's a question, sure. <laughs> Sometimes they're just like statements, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you're if, boring. That's why you're still single. Yeah. No, okay. <laughs> like, true. cool. If the person of your dreams asked you to be in a relationship starting today, what would you say? Answer Absolutely. A. <laughs> yeah, that's You're not right, a I'm that's fine. not a answer. The answers are sure. Why not? It depends. You'd want to figure out if you actually click. No, you need more time to warm up to someone. All right. I think he would say sure. Why not? You should change that to absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> he just jumps into relationship. He's like, absolutely do this. Do you agree with that answer? Are you also hitting that one? Yeah. Okay. Question two. What do you do when you see that hot soccer player who scored yesterday's winning goal? <laughs> Answers. <laughs> Half smile and kind of look away. Congratulate him on a good game, but don't push the conversation further. Pick him for your team in gym class. You want one-on-one -on -one time. Ooh. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I think the middle one. Congratulate him on a good game. <laughs> Probably. And we know that GL swings both ways, so it doesn't matter that this was made for girls. Yeah, yeah. Gender is fluid. It's fine. Gender is fluid. Gender is a figment of your imagination. It's, fine. it's a social construct. It's okay. Yep. When it comes to relationships, you consider yourself. See, this is one where it's not a question. It's a statement, and like you're supposed to end it. And the ends are sort of experience. You've hung out with crushes before, but nothing has ever materialized into a fully fledged relationship. Experienced, you've been in a relationship before. <laughs> Inexperienced, you're still waiting for that perfect first date or first kiss. I think the first one. Yeah, definitely. Because <laughs> that's how I, I picture Jill's like harem. <laughs> <laughs> when you're crushing hard on someone new, A, you tell them why sit around waiting for them to make the first move. B, you tell your closest friend, but that's it. C, it's a big deal. You hardly ever go googly-eyed for anyone. I would say absolutely. I was, at first like, I was like, what would I pick? It? And then I'm like, oh no, my answer is very different from <laughs> 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 Oh boy. Actually, you're not taking the quiz. I'm not We're taking the quiz. This is not, this is not about my life. <laughs> <This> is not... <laughs> okay, next thing. Your older sister takes you to a party while you're visiting her at college, and a cutie catches your eye. You, A, flirt, what's the harm? B, quietly people watch on the couch. C, hang out with your sister and forget your crush. You came here with her after all. No, A, flirt, flirt, flirt. so hard. How dateable are people at your school? A, average. Some are cute and smart, but not everyone piques your interest. B, ugh, not at all. You can't wait to move into college or the real world where you're bound to meet new people. <laughs> These quizzes make me laugh. So. <laughs> C. Totally dateable. In fact, you've gone after a few of them. Totally dateable. Yeah. If we're thinking school in Estelle, then I'm going with totally dateable. <laughs> yeah, he was, he's like, what, 17 and he has like four women that we know of? I thought he was 19. Actually, it gets confusing at the end because there's a lot of yes, time no. skipping that I don't know when it happened. <laughs> Whatever. What do you write in your crush's yearbook? Nothing. They didn't ask to sign yours. You won't sign theirs. That's sad. That is sad. <laughs> That's so sad. That's so choice. <laughs> Next choice. A flirty okay. note. And your phone number is squiggly. I'm adding the squiggly. Have a good summer. You're not that close yet. But you want to at least write something. A flirty note. A flirty note. Duh. <laughs> totally flirty. How do you feel about being single? A. Sometimes it gets you down. But you haven't met anyone we're starting a relationship with recently. B. It bums you out. You're a social butterfly. You're happiest when your life is filled with people. C. It feels inevitable. Putting yourself out there is too scary right now. Huh. Okay. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I'm going with the middle one. <laughs> it bums you out. Yeah, yeah. You bummed out. <laughs> you bum out. You have plans to hang out with your besties on Friday night, but your crush calls you to ask you to a movie. You say no. You'd rather stay in your comfort zone and hang out with your friends. Say yes. If you say no this time, 
they might never call again, right? Say yes, your friends will understand. Your friends will understand. He doesn't really Say. have friends, though, does he? I was <laughs> like, like yeah, does he have yeah. friends? <laughs> So it can't I mean, be it can't um, be the first the one theory. either because I go with the middle one because <laughs> he doesn't have friends. <laughs> also, my answer I mean, would be so totally theory, different. So it's, it's oh, he did have the fairy, but like that's special. That's <laughs> 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 that should have been his own manga. Anyway, <laughs> the hardest part about having a crush is your friends don't think your crush is all that great. Texting with your crush is kind of terrifying, but you suck at it and do it anyway. Oh, but you suck it up and do it anyway. That's a very different... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> See, very I can't different. read. <laughs> <laughs> You're too nervous to tell them how you feel. Hmm. Okay. Texting doesn't really apply to a magical realm, does it? He doesn't have friends. Well, I mean, if we're going by Maru, yeah. she doesn't like um, Ari. And I think that generally people are like, stop going after Ari. So I would actually go with A. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> You're trying to figure out if your crush likes you back, so you ask them. Problem solved. <laughs> I love it. <It's> okay. <laughs> you ask them to hang out with you and see where it goes from there. Nothing. Hopefully if they like you, they'll make the first move. First one. <laughs> first one. Absolutely. <laughs> your ideal relationship involves old-fashioned romance. They sweep you off your feet. Effortless communication. You'd finish each other's sentences. Lots of spontaneous adventures. Together, you two would have non-stop fun. The last one. The last one, but I love that for Irie, it would be old-fashioned romance. Oh, yeah. Sweep you off your feet. Perfectly. Oh, my God. See results. We should have oh picked God. her. <laughs> what? We should have picked it to do um, based on her. Why are you still single? Because you're dead. No, I'm Because you're dead. Because somebody kissed Cause you. <laughs> Woo. Okay. The results. Results. You are bold. Amazing opportunities come to you because you rarely back away from what you want. But not just anyone is right for your strong personality. Believe it or not, someone shy might be your best bet. We'll appreciate your take charge attitude and the fact that you can say exactly what you mean. I agree. <laughs> I agree with these results, Seventeen Magazine. Boom. <laughs> So accurate. And we know who's shy. Like, absolutely. <laughs> Sweet sister. Aww. And she has a name, which is me. Me. Is, I identify her by her name, not her relationship to a male. That's right. Feminism. Hashtag feminism. <laughs> she's only in like four panels. Of <laughs> anyway, Jesus. me. Yeah, she's shy. Yay. Yay. It worked out. Woo. All right. Shipping corner time. Everybody's favorite segment. <laughs> so normally in shipping corner, I like try to go through and write all the canonical ships, but there was like a list in volume four of most popular combos. So like, I'm going to read the list and then we're going to discuss our feelings about said list. So number one, Aram and Irie. Too obvious. Two, <laughs> Aram and Jill. Too obvious. <laughs> Sorry, repeat that one again. Aram and Jill. <laughs> That's incest. That's incest. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know about that. Three, Jill and Lee. I approve. <laughs> Four, Irie and Jill. Five, Aram and Lee. Six, Jill and Maruru. Mm -hmm. Seven, Raz and Nakaoji. Oh, yeah, yeah. they're a good couple. <laughs> Eight, Aram and Nakio Nakaoji. Oh, okay. Nine, Irie and Lee. No. 10. Raz and Maribel. Okay. Yeah, I'd say that one. Yeah, that's fine. That's okay. <laughs> Age difference there, too. That's okay. I think my OTP is Raz and Nakaoji. OTP! <laughs> what? And for those that don't know what OTP is. Oh. Um, one true pairing. Yes. OTP. OTP. <laughs> uh, from this list, I would actually have to do. Oh, they're just not. I guess Maruru and Jili. Yeah, that's good. That's good. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, they share life force. I am really, know, really surprised there. that number two is Aram and his brother. Like, what? That came out of nowhere for me. I don't understand. 
Well, it is kind of weird because at one point in the story, if you recall, when they're working at the Royal Academy, um, he turns himself into a little boy, Aram and right. Geely. Yes. And they accidentally kiss. Oh, that did happen. Aram is hugging them both. And then Geely turns back into his normal oh, self. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, brotherly love. Um wouldn't actually call that OTD, but okay. <laughs> Apparently people really like that scene, I guess. That was me. I was like, I don't know, man. I mean, love comes in all shapes and forms, of course, but I don't know. I don't think it should have I been draw the <laughs> line at, like, incest. I have lines. Oh, yeah, absolutely. There's lines. There's lines all over the place. Mine are very fluid, but incest is, like, a pretty, like, <laughs> Pretty much be there on the same page on that one. Yeah. Um... So, what's one pairing that's not on the list that you would have liked to have seen, or were really happy about? I don't. Do you have one? I have three. Well, <laughs> all right. I guess then you can <laughs> say. So, okay, so one that's not on the list that, that I was really for for a while was Roz and Ari. <laughs> um, of course. It was. I was feeling it for a bit when I first read it, and then in chapter like 10, 12, he tried to kill her. So, <laughs> you're that like, maybe not. Like, okay. uh, yeah, that is not love, people. Don't, don't, don't be with those people. Don't be, with, don't be with people who try to hurt you. And then, like, at the end, he was still thinking about her. So, I don't know. That was kind of one. And then, you know, it's unforgivable when someone tries to kill you. So, no. What I was really excited about that we didn't see a lot of was uh, Lee and the Queen. Yeah, oh, yeah. Really I actually agree story. with this one. This is this is the one <laughs> that's not on the list, and I'm like, no, yeah, that's dope. <laughs> that was, and I was like, wow, that's pretty intense stuff right there. And she's married, and she has a baby, and you're supposed to take care of her baby. It, it, yeah, it's pretty intense. There's a lot there. Um, and then one that wasn't anywhere near the radar was uh, Maruru and Ni. Um, <laughs> yeah, they were small scene together. I thought it was really cute. Yeah, could be magic there. <laughs> could be magic there. <laughs> yeah, that's one of the ships that just like came out of nowhere. I was like, okay, sure, why not? They so you're like, over. screw GL. Screw liking GL. Both of you should like each other. I'm always a yeah. fan of those types of love triangles where it's like, like the the Korra treatment, basically Legend of Korra. That's basically what happens. <laughs> between... Spoilers for that one. Spoilers for that one. Listen, I feel like this was such a controversy at this point that like you just know <laughs> that <laughs> Korra ended up with a, a, a Sami instead of uh, what's his dumb even. I don't even don't even like his face. Mako, screw that guy. Yeah, he don't know what he's about. Uh, yeah, those were my my ships. I'm. I still think. Yeah, yeah. I really like Lee and the Queen. Again, I think that should have been its own manga. I think this manga should have tried to harder instead to be like not Harry Potter or Lord of the Rings. It should have actually gone more like Game of Thrones, like backstabbing side stories. <laughs> I thought you were going to say side stabbing. I'm like, yeah, that's side stabbing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that too. I don't, I mean, it doesn't have to be as stabby as Game of Thrones, just as like a. Uh, romantic side story weirdness yeah, <laughs> it's good because like the queen has like relationships with all of these people yet she's not a present figure like her and raz are auntie and nephew what's that about lee's in love with her yeah it's, it's pretty crazy <laughs> like, a crazy hidden figure, man. <laughs> <laughs> hidden figure where's she at um and yeah she's kind of mean which i kind of like because yeah it's great <laughs> yeah, yeah oh i guess i also didn't i'm like why is irie and lay lay lee lay i don't know how would i say his name in japanese i guess it would be lay which is basically lee so sure <laughs> uh so like Irie i just don't and... pronounce vowels sometimes i'm like no nope, that's stupid i'm just gonna call you what I think well, see, I've gotten good at being like, okay, I know enough Japanese to be like, I can pronounce the Japanese things, but then when it's like fairy tale world on top of <laughs> German world, on top of German, on top of Japanese, I'm like, all right, now, now you've lost me. Actually, that is one of my favorite stories from Japanese class is the word for part time work is arubaito. And I was like, arubaito? Like, why? 
And it was like written in katakana, which normally means it's a foreign word. But I was like, what the heck is arubaito? And then I realized it's arbeit, which in German just means work. And I was like, seriously? <laughs> I'm really, I'm really struggling now. <laughs> Y'all are killing me. <laughs> That's how reading this manga feels. Just constantly. <laughs> well, I thought you would have an advantage because, you know, you both studied Japanese and German. I know, but and I don't so, think that, like... like... I'm going to be referring to you on how to <laughs> But I wasn't good. <laughs> like, certainly not at Japanese. <laughs> and, uh, Wouldn't they bring like a Spanish, Navajo, English combination? I'll be right yeah, there. Yeah, it says Loyola. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Once that happens. <laughs> That's, I'll seek that out next time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, um, I'm like, I really, I don't think... I guess just because they don't like each other. Yeah, he like hates her. Yeah. <laughs> like at one point, he has to pretend to be her in her day to day life, and while she's studying magic and magic wind, and he comes back, and there's just this picture of him, you know, transformed into her, and it's just like, what the? F- <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> Amount of hate. Such that hate. Picture. And I guess it's like, yeah. I don't know, the one above that is Aram and Nakaoji, which I'm like, I see why people did that, because that's just funny. But I think that's because his hate of Nakaoji is so, like, different. Like, I get that, like, mm. you know, Lee's, Lee's hate seems much more, like, personal, real. Like, he's, like, actually watching out for Aram's well-being and the well-being of, like, a kingdom, whereas Aram's hate of Nakaoji is just, like, petty and silly and whatever <laughs> and i'm like sure they would make a great couple in a funny world like in a side comedy yeah that'd be great yeah. so we both agree that aram and irie is like whatever like it's okay. yeah i mean we all knew it was gonna happen like there's no surprises there <laughs> um, they're okay for each other i guess like as far as as much personality that came through in the storytelling, I guess. Like, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I guess. I mean, like, how sure can you be on a fictional relationship, really? Yeah. I guess the issue with fictional relationships is that if I don't identify with the characters, then I don't really care, oh, like, if they get together. Okay. Yeah. So, like, I'm like, yeah, like, Iris okay, and, like, Aram's an okay dude, but I'm not, like super attached to either of them myself so i'm like eh. oh my god now am i i'm thinking am i attached to them like do you identify with either one of these people like sometimes <laughs> i feel like a magic prince you know in a different world sometimes i feel like wow sometimes, really <laughs> yeah and then sometimes i feel like a, a plain japanese girl no i'm kidding <laughs> <laughs> and then sometimes and then sometimes i just feel like a normal high school <laughs> girl normal. i'm sorry not plain that's, that's the wrong word normal yeah. I love that trope too. I'm just a normal average just everyday a normal high school okay. girl who wants normal okay. high school girl things. Like a relationship on the plane. <laughs> Why on would the you plane. go to the plane? <laughs> there are tornadoes there. Don't go there. No. <laughs> the planes are great. Well, yeah. I mean, I don't know enough about that in Japan, but I feel like there's definitely some sort of there's tension between like all the young people want to live in the cities, but now like do the population crisis sort of deal where like they're not making enough babies and old people will start dying rapidly soon uh it's like the rural areas of japan are actually like emptying out and stuff so i don't know reverse fantasy of that <laughs> <laughs> i guess yeah. anyway so do we have any other final final thoughts anything we didn't bring up she I have a series of final thoughts. I'm just going to rapid fire these off. Okay. Uh, cool. First one, where are the grown-ups? Like, seriously. So Ari states that her parents work overseas. Okay. Typical trope. And then she's like, my grandparents live downstairs. Okay. I'm like, we're going to meet them or, you know, grandma's going to impart some wisdom or something. Never heard from, never seen. <laughs> Not even like in a background or like my grandparents said. It's just like yeah. teenage girl living by herself, fifteen in some city in Japan. Okay, it's, it's cool. 
have two dogs, which I know is a big thing in Japan because of space, right? Like, she has a backyard. She has a two-story house. Yeah, I like, guess that's true. I guess that would lead me to believe it's perhaps not a city. like Or a city-esque, as we think. But Yeah. Yeah, that was pretty intense. I was like, who's feeding your dogs? Like, seriously, where are these people at? I just um, thought I that Irie was taking care of the dogs. You, he's a guy who's probably never seen a dog, right? Right? Oh, when Lee I is her. I don't know. In, uh, I guess he basketball. just becomes friends with the dogs and loves them and... I don't know, because he was like, I things are degrading to him, which I feel like feeding animals is probably one of All them. Right, like, then they're dead, Loyola. You... <laughs> <laughs> they're responsible. She has they're two dead. eyes in her hand, and she killed them. And they're chows, so, you know, that's horrible. They do not die easy. Anywho. Uh, <laughs> so the whole point. Lee can transform into a bird. Like, what the heck? What? <laughs> like, yeah, why not? Taking place in a the He's first... the Order of the Phoenix. <laughs> <laughs> it takes place in the first couple of chapters. <laughs> but yeah, it never happens again. No explanation whatsoever. His sister doesn't transform into a bird. Never brought up. Okay, I thought that was really cool. But yeah, no, no more bird action. I really liked the class trip. I loved when I forgot about Ari. So I just want to make that clear. Love the style and aesthetic. <laughs> so you're a fan of uh, amnesia romances. Is that? <laughs> I was in high school, but now I find them annoying because I think it's been overdone. <laughs> <laughs> you read too many. You read like I read five too, many. too many. I went over the edge. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I think this is one of the first ones I've read that had amnesia as part of the story. Ah. And so, yeah, I think that's why it's a little bit more okay with me. Whereas, like, others, I'm like, oh, my God, please, no amnesia. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Come on. No more amnesia. Wait, it's not technically amnesia because it's not medical. It's magic amnesia. And magic so amnesia, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so would have liked to see a little bit more storyline with uh, the people of Estelle at Ari's high school. I thought that would have been a lot more fun because Lee actually takes over a gang of students at one point. What's that like? <laughs> How do you do that? How is that? <laughs> How is that? And, you know, I think uh, having Maribel a little bit more mixed in with Raz, having them at the high school at the same time would have been really interesting to see their relationship because he helps her with this thing, which she, you know, when the little box that takes his memories, arms memories, and he's appointed by the queen to do it and it's like this whole conspiracy and it's like what the hell this is awesome it's, it's more <laughs> of that please so yeah that was just some things that i had some last lines of and of course popular scene lines they have a list in volume four of what made was very popular i'm not gonna go through them do you want to go through them uh, i think if you just say them out loud it doesn't make any sense yeah but yeah you can tell us if you agree, listeners, with the popular scenes lines, because I'm kind of like, eh. <laughs> It was okay. It wasn't, like, yeah. amazing. I'm not going to be quoting it, you know what I mean? Not gonna be, <laughs> you're not going to quote, at long last, I make my entrance. <laughs> <laughs> that was number 10. <laughs> that was number 10. <laughs> I'm going to constantly say, let's travel the kingdom and beg for our wedding gifts. <laughs> <laughs> America, give me my wedding gifts. Absolutely. For the wedding I'm not even having. <laughs> um, I will be saying this girl is pardoned for any perceived slights. And I'll be I talking do, that one to is, myself that in third useful. person. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be referring to myself as this girl. This girl. Me. <laughs> yes. I love it. Awesome. That, uh, number nine and number seven, respectively. So, <laughs> a lot of good lines in this series. You know what I mean? Very quotable. <laughs> I'm going to say specifically, Irie, will you marry me? <laughs> that was number one. That was number one. Boo, boring. <laughs> Boo. <laughs> Very straight. You got to see the images, okay? The images add a lot of context to these quotes, but... Yeah, they're they're pretty great. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the dialogue wasn't amazing, but it was pretty good. I liked it. It was, really... it was good. Um, it was certainly better than having, again, I guess the last episodes that will have aired on this podcast will have been Maid-sama. Maid-sama is like 
dialogue is way too too much of it <laughs> and you're like mm. and i think it was poorly written in the first place and then sometimes the translation you're like wait what's going on who i've read a few of those what? yeah <laughs> it's very confusing anyway so that was Mary Fury. Woo! Yay. Again, finally figured out how to pronounce it. And I'm pretty <laughs> stoked. <laughs> Didn't figure out how to pronounce anything else throughout the course of this podcast, but oh well. Nope. <laughs> cool. I'll read this outro. Thanks for listening to Shoujo and Tell. Comments, questions, constructive criticism, concerns? Need to gush about your OTP? Email shoujoandtell at gmail.com or leave a comment on the episode page at shoujoandtell.com slash Puri. You can also tweet us at Shoujo and Tell on Twitter or follow at Shoujo and Tell on Facebook. This is a new podcast, so it'd be great if you could leave a review on iTunes. This will help the podcast reach more hearts, or at least ears. Thanks again for listening. We'll be back next time for Millennium Snow. I don't actually know that much about the series, but reading the description, it sounds like a less love triangle vampire knight from the creator of Oran High School Host Club. Wait, what? Anyway, stay tuned. Woo! You should say bye, Lulu. Bye, everybody! Bye.